For now, what I'd like to do is uh, turn this over to Dr. Weber for a moment. I'd like you to discuss, Dr. Weber, if you would, uh, the link between diabetes and the suite of cardiometabolic conditions, especially cardiovascular disease, or CVD. Diabetes is typically associated with high blood pressure, with lipid abnormalities, and with kidney disease, and very intimately part of what does lead to cardiovascular disease, stroke, and uh, very often uh, in the United States, reduced renal function, in many cases to a point where patients are going to need to be on kidney machines in a dialysis unit. So it's a very tight link. And of course, I'm talking about type 2 diabetes, which is the main kind of diabetes we encounter. About 90, 95% of diabetes is type 2. And it's usually related to obesity. That seems to be the common link that brings on the hypertension, that brings on the lipid disorders, and makes it more difficult to really do a perfect job for these people in terms of protecting them from major cardiovascular outcomes. What about the correlation of HbA1c to cardiovascular disease or acute coronary syndrome and stroke? We usually measure our success in managing diabetes by measuring the hemoglobin A1c, and it is a reasonably good guide to uh, outcomes, but it's not a perfect guide. It tells you that you're doing a good or not such a good job of treating the diabetes. That's good. That's job one, if you like. But it's equally as important to control the blood pressure effectively. In fact, there are a couple of major trials that have shown that the best favor you could do for anybody with diabetes is get their blood pressure under control. Of course you want to get the glucose under control, and that's why we check on the hemoglobin A1c. And of course you want to get the lipids under control, and that's why we want to have the low-density lipoprotein, the LDL cholesterol, nice and low, preferably below 100. Many people feel preferably below 60 or 70. And why you really want to work with these patients as well on losing weight, doing things that are going to make all of these important risk factors improve. Can you define metabolic syndrome and its connection to cardiovascular health? The metabolic syndrome, for some people, is a bit of a controversial area. And it's really the group of abnormalities that seem to result from obesity. This modern trend we're seeing to eating more and exercising less. Sadly, more and more children, young adolescents, now have type 2 diabetes, probably mediated through this cardiometabolic syndrome. What makes up the cardiometabolic syndrome? A big waist diameter, again goes right along with obesity. An increase in blood pressure, doesn't have to be full-fledged hypertension, but an increase above 130 over 85. A low HDL, is, uh, cholesterol, is often part of the story. Uh, it's really just looking at the lipids. Uh, high triglycerides are another part of the metabolic syndrome. That's how we think of it. Lipids, blood pressure, body size. Those are the, the main issues. In Europe, they also talk about microalbuminuria as a predictor of cardiovascular outcomes that appears to be caused by the metabolic syndrome. By definition, of course, Anybody with metabolic syndrome is going to have an increased glucose level, and of course, if they're diabetic, it's going to be even higher into what you call the, the true diabetic range. And yes, when you look at all the risk factors that go along with a metabolic syndrome, the uh, increase in the lipids, the uh, increased LDL, the reduced HDL, both risk factors in their own right, look at the high blood pressure, you start to see why these people are at high cardiovascular risk. I personally am not sold on the idea that by saying that someone has metabolic syndrome, we've said more than relaying what we've already found by looking and working with a patient. Yeah, you've got high glucose, so you've got diabetes. Yes, you've got uh, high blood pressure. We've got to do something about that as well. Yes, you've got abnormal lipids. We need to work on that as well. So all of those things are there 
and can be dealt with. I don't know if I want to create yet another diagnosis and say, oh, you've got metabolic syndrome. What does that mean? It means what we've been talking about. You, do, you deal with the blood pressure, you deal with the lipids, you deal with the diabetes, get the glucose under control, you get the patient to exercise, lose weight, all of those important things are part of uh, dealing with that situation.